Good morning. So here we are live with the Ask Dr. Annette Poop Talk Show. My phone just sent me a notification that I was going live, so that's awesome. I love that. So good morning. I hope you're doing well today. And I wanted to talk on Poop Talk today about getting derailed and how those little infringements affect your overall health. And um, hopefully you guys can see me well today. I know Facebook was um, not very cooperative yesterday. Facebook or Instagram, as a matter of fact, they were both a little bit grumpy yesterday. It was like impossible to post or comment for a big part of the day. So hopefully they've got that resolved. But I wanted to talk to you guys today about how those little tiny infractions that you have, the little derailings that you have, how they affect your health. And for those of you that don't know me, I'm Dr. Annette, and I love to help people live a better, healthier lifestyle and have more energy to do the things they love to do with the people they love to do it with. And I like my Facebook page says, you know, helping you create a life you don't need a vacation from. So doing all of the things that make you healthy and happy, super important. Um, so here we go. Do you sometimes do the little tiny things like you have the little bit of gluten or you have the little bit of sugar? Tell me as you're coming on, do you ever accidentally on purpose <laughs> eat something that you know you're not supposed to? Do you ever eat gluten when you know that the gluten is going to cause you to suffer later on? Do you ever do things like eat sugar knowing that the next day you're going to crave sugar all day Long. Do you ever eat something that you know you're sensitive to that it might cause you a migraine headache, might, you know, cause you to have achy joints or anything like that without really taking into consideration all of the ramifications that that can have on your health? I've done it. I still occasionally do it, although I do it much less frequently now than I used to. But um, I don't know if you can tell, I think I have some allergies going on today because of um it's spring in florida thank goodness um but i've got a little bit of a scratchy throat hopefully that's all it is but um do you get derailed have you ever gotten derailed and this applies to a lot of things in your life like if you decide you're going to do an exercise program and you do really good for like the first week and you're like sticking with it and then something happens and you can't go to the gym or you can't do your exercise routine. How hard is it the next day to get back on track? It really is hard. And that's why accountability, accountability partners and um, having your why, the reason why you're doing it, super, super in definition for you so that you know exactly what your why is. Because if you don't have a specific why, then it's going to be super hard for you to stay on track and get back to the thing once you've gotten derailed. And I mean, there's lots of reasons that people get derailed. You could get derailed because you're hanging out with some friends you haven't seen for a while and everybody there is doing whatever it is that you're not going to do. Like if you've said, I'm not going to drink this week, and then you go out for lunch with all your friends and they all get a beer, it makes you more inclined to get a beer. I mean... Not necessarily peer pressure, but you still you you just it's easier for you to to sway your decisions. Or say you decide you're gonna eat salad every day this week for lunch, and then you meet up with one of your friends for lunch and they get a steak and you're like, ah, I think I want a steak too. You know, so it's really easy to get off of your plan. So I'm gonna give you some tips on how to, to stay on your plan. First of all, this is a great way to stay on your plan. It's my favorite way. It really helps you make better decisions. Um, but what I what I would highly recommend you do, tip number one, is write down your goal and put it somewhere where you see it every day. Write it down. Make sure that you're very specific on your goal. If it is to lose 50 pounds, write down what you're going to do to lose those 50 pounds. Make a plan. What is it that you're going to do? And look at that every single day. So that way, when you come upon something that is tempting you to do not what you were planning, it'll make it a little easier for you to stick to your plan because you have the reason why. So you've got your why. Actually, that's number one. Your why is number one. And then number two is what's your goal? 
So you write down your why and you get very specific as to what your why is and you want to make sure that it's very important to you what your why is. And then step number two is write down how you're going to do it. What's your goal and how you're going to do it. And then check that every day. And then if you need an accountability partner, step three would be to get an accountability partner and send them your why your goal and the reasons and all of the ways you're going to do that. So you've got your why, your goal, and how you're going to make that happen. And then you send that to your accountability partner. And you guys check in with each other every single day, set a time every single day that you check in with each other. And if you feel like you're going to fall off of your program, you can message or call your accountability partner and they can remind you of the things that you told them your reason why, what your goals were. And sometimes it just helps you to have somebody tell you, hey, now you told me that you wanted to lose 50 pounds by such and such date because it really makes a big difference to you when you can spend time with your children or you can spend time with your grandchildren or you wanted to take your children to a theme park and you don't think you'll be able to fit on the rides if you don't lose that 50 pounds or you have a wedding coming and you want to look really good or maybe you have a class reunion coming and you'd like to be in better shape than you are right now be healthier and happier those are all really good reasons that's your why and then you have to figure out what your goal is. What is it that you necessarily like really want to do by that certain date? And then your steps that you're going to do to get there. And I think if you do those three things, then you will be much more successful and you'll be much happier. Now, if you're in my keto lifestyle group, you can get in the group and either find a buddy in there or you can just use the whole group as your as your accountability partner and you can just put a post in there these are my this is my why this is my plan and um, who wants to be accountability partners with me I bet you would get a bunch of people that would all want to do it and we can even create a little group if you want to inside of the group that you guys can use as accountability partners so if you're not part of my keto lifestyle group make sure you send me a message and I'll tell you how to get in there but if you are feel free to, to you know collaborate within the group with each other for those three things what's your why What's your goal and your plan on how to get there? And do you need an accountability partner? Those three things are going to make you much more successful in your goals and your dreams and your wishes and keeping you from getting derailed. So now that we've talked about how to avoid getting derailed, I'm going to tell you some things that your ramifications of getting derailed. First of all, if you eat sugar, not only do you kick yourself out of ketosis for an unknown amount of time that which includes causing cravings and um, other things like miserable times for you to get back into ketosis maybe you might have to go through the keto flu again but on top of that it also causes damage to your gut and you know when you damage your gut you damage your immune system and your brain health and also you could end up with brain fog and things like that if gluten is your thing and you cheated with gluten who knows what your symptoms might be? It could be eczema, psoriasis, migraine headaches, leaky gut syndrome, which leads to a whole host of other problems. You just don't know unless you've actually sat down and figured out what, what gluten happens, what gluten causes to happen to you, then you don't even know. But gluten takes about six weeks to get out of your system. So if you cheat once in a six week period, you gotta start all over again. So getting rid of gluten and grains in your lifestyle is super important if you have reactions to them. And the only way to know if you're having a reaction is to avoid them for at least six weeks. So I recommend that you do that if you're trying to figure out some health issues that you just can't quite get past. That's definitely something that you want to test out would be gluten sensitivity. And you have to be off of it for at least six weeks before you'll be able to tell if something else is happening. So, um, I mean, I don't even, I can't, there's a list, like a mile long list of symptoms that you could have from eating things that don't, that your body doesn't tolerate very well. Headaches, migraines, joint pain, muscle pain, brain fog, um, diarrhea, constipation. I mean, eczema, like there's a whole entire list of things that could happen from eating foods that you're sensitive to that your body does not like. So hopefully this was very helpful. If it was, please remember to hit like and see first or follow and see first. Share with a friend. Let them know that we do poop talk every day at 1030. And that's Eastern Standard Time. 
And keep in mind that I have something really fun coming. It's going to be more of a create your create a lifestyle that you love by, first of all, figuring out who you are and what you want and how to get there. See you soon. See you soon.